if you're mentoring somebody, that that seems to work. You find the person that's like a self-starter that's going to like read the play, so they kind of figure some additional things out on their own in order to cle- complete this really simple task. Now you know you could just run a job on Indeed. You could sponsor it for fifty bucks, and you could have a canned response that has uh, that link to do the test project. And so if you have 50 applicants, you can very quickly whittle it down to like two that are going to be stellar. What's up, y'all? You're listening to the Carrot Cast podcast, the podcast with a funny name, but a big mission. We help thousands of real estate investors and agents grow rock solid mindsets, do better marketing so that you can build a business of freedom and impact. I'm your host, Trevor Mock. Let's dive into today's episode. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Carrot Cast. And uh, I've got a return guest with me. And Mr. David Letko I had a chance to meet him in person. This probably, I don't know, probably three years ago. Um, I think the first time was was at a Max Maxwell event. And then we had a chance to dive in even, even deeper uh, with our coach uh, in Atlanta uh, a couple of years ago. And since then, man, it's just been so impressive seeing uh, not just the business that David has built with uh, Deal Machine. And we're going to be learning today about how to build an amazing team of deal finders for you. People who are actually going to be driving around for you so you don't have to do it all the time to find the best deals in the market, pull them out for you, hand them in front of you in a silver platter uh, on a consistent basis. So David's going to break down how that happens. But one of the things that we're, um, I didn't tell David before I hit recording on this, but I, I think it'd be an interesting interesting topic towards the end to talk about. He's done an amazing job building a great team as well. And so while we're talking about the team side of it on driving for dollars, I think it might be worth it digging into the team part a little bit too on some, you know, how do you build a team even outside of the driving for dollars side of it? Just a little bit, but welcome back uh, to the Caracast, David. Uh, what, how's summer been, man? Thank you so much for having me. The summer has been really great. It's gone by fast. Uh, one of the highlights for me was uh, a birthday present I got from my girlfriend was to drive an Indy car. So it's like uh, an open wheel car. It looks like a Formula One car, but it's uh, unique to Indy car, which is where I live in Indianapolis. And so I got to drive it three laps around the track at 130 miles per hour behind the lead car that uh, made sure I was in the right spot on the track. And unlike anything I've ever done before, it was it was really inspiring. It was I was actually sad for a little bit afterwards because. I was like, man, I, I can't be a race car driver. I'm just too old, <laughs> but uh, I'm thankful that I had the experience. It was so much fun. Dude, that, that kind of stuff is so cool. I know uh, one thing that hit me, uh, same thing a few years ago, Martel, uh, our coach, uh, he said something that he called, I think, magical moments. And I, I, re- I read a book just recently that, man, it, it was for, for me where I am with, with young kids and you've know, been in the entrepreneur game for a bit. Uh, this book called Chasing Daylight. I talk about it on my podcast, guys, go check it out. But it really hit me and he calls them perfect moments. And in creating the time to do those things like that, dude, that's like a magical moment. It's one of those things where we work our butts off to grow biz- our businesses, but sometimes we don't enjoy uh, it as much as um, as we should or th- as we could. So congrats on creating a magical moment that you'll be able to, to live with you forever. And you're going to keep creating some more, I'm sure. I love it. Yeah, thanks. I uh, felt guilty because I took the morning off to do it, <laughs> but it's good. It's it's really good. It, the, the team didn't hate me for taking off the morning. Nobody uh, nobody was worried about it. The, the, you know, the business kept running, so mm-hmm. it was a it was a magical moment. And I, I hope to take more time to do more of that because it was not as scary as I thought it would be. <laughs> I, love I don't it, know. Man. Do you if you easily take vacations or not? But my co-founder had to give me the feedback that I need to take a vacation because he, uh, he felt guilty or maybe he was like, the team may feel guilty because you're working so much Mm -hmm. and we don't need them to get burned out, you know? So take a vacation. And it was a lot of fun and it it wasn't so scary. Dude. So that's some really good feedback actually. So, so let's spend like five minutes on this before we dive into uh, the real topic. And I'm going to set the stage again for y'all. One of the best ways that that we teach here at Carrot and David knew that they're the industry industry leader in driving for dollars. One of the best ways that we that we teach to get deals and leads coming in quickly while you're building the evergreen with Carrot and while you're uh, amplifying with paid marketing, if you've got the budget for that in the first 90 days, um, is driving for dollars. And I talk about Brian Rockwell 
Uh, one of our carrot clients, you've been to the carrot camp a couple of times, insanely successful, started as a school teacher, um, made 600 grand with carrot his first year. And now he's buying multifamily and still you know, bringing in over half a million a year from carrot you guys. His first deal was driving for dollars. Like he's like, I don't have a big budget. And so he went around there and drove around and found a house in Dallas in a crazy competitive market uh, that he ended up making $8,000 on from driving for dollars. And so uh, guys, everybody should have this in your mix in some way, shape or form, whether you're a newer investor or whether you're a bigger one, it's, a, it's something you add on to care not do instead. You, they work great together. So we're going to show you how to do that and build a team of drivers. So they do it for you. So you're not having to drive. But before we do, let's talk about that entrepreneurial guilt thing. That's, that's what I call it is entrepreneurial guilt is, um, is it's the weirdest thing, right? Like there, there's things that give you energy, like going and having that amazing moment of driving the race car, or it could be golfing for somebody, or it could be mountain bike riding or running or whatever it is. And, and I think it's really, really common as an entrepreneur for us to have that guilt where, where we feel, oh man, our, my team is working hard. I don't want them to see me take a picture of me golfing at 11 o'clock on a Tuesday because you know it, it might make them feel like, um, man, they're working their butts off and I'm just sitting here you know, working the system. And, and yeah, uh, totally. It, it, I think it's natural. And so it sounds like you, you had a really great learning lesson. I, I can walk through a mindset shift I've made on that just recently to the last couple of years. But so you're going back uh, in, into work now after having that amazing, you know, magical moment. Are you changing anything, man? Like, are you proactively putting anything in your schedule uh, to uh, create those times for you to uh, regain that energy? So I've not put anything in my schedule yet. Uh, mm -hmm. I've, I've decided we're going to have a October or November week long vacation with my girlfriend and I, uh, I, ha I haven't quite planned that yet for this year, but mm -hmm. that would be the thing I've kind of bookmarked in my mind is like, I need to take a week off at this time of year. And, uh, you know, that's when we met. And so it's a good time to celebrate that. Um, I've, I've toyed with taking some Friday afternoons off, but it hasn't been a part of my schedule, yep. but those always feel exciting. Those, those always feel good when I get to take that time off. Mm. Uh, I've, I've done golfing and uh, I've also done uh, go-karting, which is like a scaled down version of the, the race car experience. Yep. Um, and that's been really fun. Dude, it's, it's so important. So here's, here's a couple insights I've had, and I'm definitely not the perfect example of it. I think Martel is probably one of the better examples that I've seen out there he of, is. of someone really taking the time away. And, and one thing that Dan had said that, that hit me, um, our coach, for those of you who are listening, Dave and I have, have the same coach uh, for our software companies. And uh, he's an amazing coach on the, on the life side of it as well. And one thing he said, he's like, man, because uh, he had the same guilt for a while. He said, the best thing you could possibly do for your team is to put yourself in the energy and mind space where you're bringing your best back to work, where you're bringing energy, more energy. You don't, you don't resent your work because your work actually helps um, fuel your lifestyle versus you going, oh man, I don't want to open up the computer now because it feels like I'm living at work. And so he said he purposefully gets away from work often to create the void so his team fills it. And um, uh, this is probably like four years ago. Um, I wouldn't suggest everybody do this, but it definitely did work for me the first time. I tried it three or four times since, and, and I'm going to adjust the way I've done it. But it was four years ago, uh, David, I said, I'm going to take a month off and I'm legit not going to check in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I did it in July. Um, that's when my birthday is. And we usually do some trips. And then I said, I'm going to plant the steak in January and give the team a full six and a half months notice. I'm taking a month of July off, like no checking in. And it was amazing because what, what it is, it forced the function of really asking the question, writing down the list of like, what are all the things that would drop when I'm gone? What decisions do I get made or what decisions do I made? Uh, what, what do other people on the team come to me for? Have them write down the list of all the things that would drop or that would be hard or what decisions wouldn't get made. And then we use that time every quarter to go, let's go through the list and create processes to have someone do it. Or I started just to say, oh, shoot, this person, why don't you just start making these decisions now up to these boundaries? Mm -hmm. and, um, and the cool thing is when I came back, I had less work. And so I started to do, because they, they kept those things after I, after I came back. Yeah. And they loved it because it actually gave them more um, things to own. And I did it again <clears throat> recently, my, my wife and I, um, you know, did a, a long five day weekend in San Diego this last week. And so we were gone from 
Thursday through, I think it was Monday and um, didn't check in. No one checked in with me. The crazy thing was my CTO, uh, who's my co-founder, was also off that whole week. And I, so I didn't plan it well. And my director of operations who runs the show, he's on his um, sabbatical. So every five years, we give people a month off of work. And so I'm like, ah, the three shareholders of the company, all of us who run the stuff are gone for the, for these three days. Yeah. And um, all I did is I reached out to one of our leaders who had never had a chance to step up in this way. I'm like, hey, X person, I'd like you to make these decisions while I'm gone. Here's the type of decisions. Make them up to uh, anything under $5,000. It's your call. Mm -hmm. And dude, he, he thought it was amazing because he's like, dude, you know, he's tapped me on the shoulder and, and I get to get to step up into some leadership that I've never had and which was cool. So dude, take the time off, get the Fridays off. I think your team's actually going to love the fact that you are because you're going to come back even more enthused. Yeah. I remember when you took the month off and, uh, I definitely am going to plan that vacation as soon as we get off this call now. Do it. Gotta do it. I love it. Well, dude, let, let's shift over to driving for dollars. So, um, uh, give yourself a, a brief intro for those of you who don't know who you are or who deal machine is, which I can't imagine is very many people in the real estate investor space, but who are you, David? And what's deal machine? And we'll dive into how to build an amazing, uh, crew of deal finders. Well, thanks for saying that. I started in 2016. I was reading the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I had a full-time job. I got really interested in rental properties and, and the cash flow game that goes along with that book. It showed me if you get a cash flowing rental, then um, you can use the proceeds from that to get another one and another one. And, and you can really grow your wealth quickly that way. So I went looking for a real estate investing group in town. They told me I need to drive for dollars to start out. And the reason, and, and you know, that was looking for a rundown house, getting in touch with the owner. Uh, and I started doing that, but I missed out on a deal because I, I didn't follow up with the owners. I spent so much time driving. I was having a blast. I had my list going um, and, I, and I passed this house and construction had begun. There was like a bunch of workers and I looked on my list. I, I must've added it like three or four weeks prior. And I realized um, when I looked it up, somebody just bought it and I thought, I could have been on to the next step if I just got my mailer out, you know, if I had gotten in contact with them. So that's what initially motivated me to just make a software tool for myself so that instead of writing on a piece of paper, I could pin it, then that would automatically uh, trigger an assistant, uh, a virtual assistant that I was going to hire to look up manually. Uh, and, and of course now it's like instant because we have like a connection with the county data, uh, but then also be able, be able to print out and mail a, a postcard at that moment. So it didn't depend on me to follow up and do it later. It was going to handle it. And then it would repeat the mail uh, as is recommended by any sales advice. You've got to reach out seven to 10 times at a minimum in order to get a response. So it would do that. And that's how deal machine started. It was a tool for myself and others used it or others wanted to use it. Um, and so I put it on the app store to share it with some friends. And, and then it just started organically growing from there when people would search driving for dollars. And that's how Deal Machine started. And then it's more sophisticated today. Um, and I would say it, it's a great way to start, but it's also a great way to scale and have control and pro, like proactive control and outreach um, for on your leads by hiring somebody to drive for you. That's the part that can be done for, you know, 10, 15, $20 an hour. And if you're doing a couple of deals, your time, you know, if you just divide whatever the proceeds are by how many hours are in a week, your time becomes more valuable than that. So you can continue to have really great, deep, deeply bought leads uh, <clears throat> uh, and scale it that way by hiring drivers. And so, was wanting to share some lessons learned about like hiring those drivers and building that team too. Dude, and that, that's that's going to be so cool because we've never done this topic uh, on the Carecast ever. We, we've never dove into how do you build. Uh, dude, back in the day, I called them bird dogs, right? It's like before a carrot, uh, uh, people will call them bird dogs. I, lo I really love the fact that you guys have moved towards the deal finders because number one, it's direct. Like, what do they do? They go find me deals, uh, yeah. which is really cool. And in back in the day, the way that we would build the bird dogs um, on on our websites, even before Carrot, uh, was we had a little page, 
that the, the page people would send people to from Craigslist or wherever they would fill the thing in. Then there are all these manual processes that um, we would have to, and my clients would have to go through to take all these individual leads and then reach out to those people, like send them this training and do all this stuff. And the cool thing is deal machine like automates all that. So we're going to go into that stuff here in a bit, but um, I want to work some numbers for you guys really quick to, to show you the importance of this. Then we're going to show you how do you build that team? How do you find those drivers? Cause they're everywhere. Uh, you, you just need to know where to look. So uh, on the math side of it, David, and I know we've, we've talked about this in some other content we've done, but let's break it down for people about how many on average uh, houses does someone need to uh, put into deal machine and start sending postcards before a deal comes out? It's a good question. It is a sliding scale depending on where you live, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not too hard to grasp. So um, our recommendation is that uh, if you live in a city like Indianapolis, where it's like a fairly low cost of living compared to, you know, Seattle, Washington or Portland, Oregon, um, you want to add like 300, a minimum, you want to add 300 rundown houses uh, at a minimum as, as fast as you can yep. and make sure you market to all of those, you know, every couple of weeks for three months. Um, and then that's about the time when you might expect to uh, have a deal pop, you know, and of course it depends on your ability to like negotiate and all that, but, um, that's a good expectation. Expectations are always just helpful. So you don't quit too soon. Yep. I, I love it. So, so guys, the, I, oh, go for it, dude. Uh, I was just going to say, if, if you live in an expensive place like Los Angeles or, you know, Portland, Oregon, that, that may go up as high as like 1200. Um, and, it is more of an investment of time and money to market to that amount of leads, but it's still doable because usually the profit on those bigger, higher, higher cost of living markets end up being larger, you know, so uh, it, you can do it anywhere, but it's kind of a sliding scale depending on your cost of living in your area. Yeah, that's, that's such a good point. Um, Joe Taylor, he's a client up in Portland, big investor up there. And um, I know he's been pulling a lot of six figure deals. Uh, he's actually lives in California now, but his main markets up in Portland. And okay. I know other others as well, where six figure deals are not uncommon. Actually they're in many cases, they are the commonality in some parts of the area. So like, like David's saying, guys, it just depends on the market that you're in. If you're in a higher cost market, Boston, as an example, we have a number of clients in Boston and their deals tend to be six figure deals, but they're also, you know, they're buying the property for $600,000 or 800 grand or whatever. And they're selling for 1.1 million. And mm -hmm. so you might have to put in some extra work or have your drivers put in extra work and pile in more properties, but it's all relative. You might, you might yeah. spend an extra, you know, a couple thousand dollars or whatever it is in order to gain an extra 40 you know, so right. it's all relative. I love it. So 300 houses, about 90 days, right? Let, let the mail drip in there. You might close the deal sooner. It might take longer. Um, and uh, as far as the, the cost, then we'll, then we'll break down how to, how to find the drivers and build that team. Um, if you are, if let's assume they're not going to do it themselves. Okay. They're not going to be the person driving around. Uh, how much on average is it, uh, does it cost to then hire a driver and how much would you then pay per week is it or how, how do you how do you pay that person good question there's three different payment strategies um but just to most you know directly answer your question uh in a in a market like indianapolis i believe the all-in cost is about like a thousand dollars um and then if you're in like a larger market i think that your cost would go up to you know four thousand five thousand mm -hmm. dollars um but you know, there's three payment methods you could do hourly, which you could do um, whatever Amazon's paying their drivers, tack a couple extra dollars on top of that. And um, that's been a good strategy. So that in, in our market, you know, that's like 15, $17 an hour. And then uh, some other people do prefer to pay per lead. You could do that. Uh, and I've seen like a dollar per lead, per, per qualified lead use. Um, that's not my preference. And then also I've seen people do just a, just a fee when you close a deal. And I would not recommend that unless uh, there's like two instances where it makes sense. Uh, if, if it's like a really close family member uh, that knows you and trusts you, they'll stick around long enough. Otherwise they'll probably uh, fizzle out and you'll have spent a lot of time finding and training that person that never stuck around long enough 
for you to get a deal. And then you never do get a deal because they stopped adding leads too soon. Mm -hmm. Um, the other time where I saw it work and, and for most people, I just don't recommend this, but if you're mentoring somebody that, that seems to work. Like if, if you are actively trying to mentor younger people who have not got, gotten a deal yet, uh, I've seen that work well, but there are very few individuals who I think can truly pull that off. Cause I, I just feel like it's so personality based. Um, and takes a lot of dedication. So if you're just, if you're trying to build your own team, I always prefer the, uh, the hourly method. Dude, I, I love it. So we've got the hourly and you were mentioning a number of bit ago, you said, um, about a thousand dollars all in, and there was the four to five. Is that, is that a thousand dollars on average, um, per deal? Like in how much you would pay that person and all that? Yeah. So if okay, you take cool. the breakdown, I said in Indianapolis, uh, or a lower cost of living market, you would want to find 300 deals. And so you would market to those properties, um, uh, over three months, you'd pay the subscription, let's say like 50 bucks each month yep. uh, on the lowest plan. So there's 150 right there. And then you have 300 deals. You're going to market to those properties, you know, for, four times, that's like 49 cents uh, per property per month um, for the marketing. And then your hours to find those properties. So then uh, if you're doing $20 an hour, I always say you need to find 12 qualified properties per hour. Mm -hmm. And so if you just take 300 divided by 12, then you get 40-ish hours uh, needed to find all those properties. And then you take 40 hours times 20. Um, and so I think all of that together adds up to about a thousand bucks. Did I get it right? I, I uh... <laughs> Dude, no, this, this is perfect, man, because what I want to do b before we, uh, we're going to shift into teaching them how to do this now is yeah. I, I want to show everyone like how number one, how palatable this is, but also how cost effective this is, that this isn't something that you need to go buy a uh, 10,000 piece, you know, uh, direct mail drop and you're, you're in it for two, three, four, five, six grand as this big old huge drop, uh, you know, right. um, shotgun approach, hoping there's a good lead out of there. When, when you're doing it this way and you train the people the way that we're going to be talking about on here and the way that deal machine enables you to train people is they're finding properties that fit certain guidelines that are already run down that already have some sort of distress. So what well, usually when you're buying a list, you're going to be sending a lot of a direct mail to people who uh, don't have a distressed property. And that's just part of the game. You know, you're, right. you're spending out a lot of, you're spending money on properties that will never sell. Um, and so this is different. So on average in, in a you know medium, smaller uh, or, or medium to normal size uh, price market, about a thousand dollars a deal, including the driving for dollars app, including the, the direct mail pieces that will go out every other week for those 300 properties and including the about 40 hours that you would pay someone you know, 15 to 20 bucks an hour uh, to drive. And so now, now, now what we're going to do is people can see that. Now look at your average profit per deal in your market, y'all. If your average profit per deal, like in Louisville, uh, where we're closing deals, um, we're right now between 30 and $50,000 on a normal wholesale when we're, when we're wholesaling them to hedge funds. Um, if it's a normal wholesale where we're wholesaling it to like a, a flipper, which we don't do a whole lot anymore, it might be you know, 10 to 15. So if we look at that and, and we're able to pull out a deal for between a thousand and $3,000 and our average profits 30 to 50 guys, that's a huge ROI. And so mm -hmm. work this, work this into that mix while you're, while you're building up the carrot. And now let's talk about how do you scale the effort uh, to really make a big impact. So break down, uh, David, wherever you want to start, man, how do we now look at building that team to scale out the driving for dollars uh, efforts? Yeah. So the first time I learned from my mistake, I posted the job on Indeed. Actually, I might have even posted on a Craigslist, which is free uh, as well. And then I, every person that responded, I set up an interview time and they agreed to it. And then like nine out of 10 people just literally didn't show up to the interview. So I was like at the coffee shop, like kind of by myself and this person didn't show up to the interview. So I quickly changed my strategy. Uh, I'm not gonna set an interview with everybody who applies. Mm -hmm. Um, but for this job, I had a lot of people that applied, you know, I got like 10 people within a day from what I recall. And so I, I had to find a way to like weed them out without taking a lot of my time. And I couldn't really do that on the resume. Cause like for driving around looking for properties, 
any kind of background qualifies. I mean, you know, you just kind of have to have a general interest in doing that. Um, so I developed the test project. Uh, I'm a big fan of test projects. It's not even necessarily as much of a test uh, as it is for them to also understand what the job is. Cause sometimes they would apply to that job and they didn't even really maybe even read the job description. And so I, I want them to be, very clear on what it is before we both spend time, you know, talking about it. So, uh, in deal machine, then my test project was just like, Hey, go get the deal machine app for free. And, and please just add like two properties. And that's the test project. Now nine, nine out of 10 people like won't do that. Mm -hmm. But then the person who does, they are filled with all these good questions now because they're like, Hey, I, I got the deal machine app. Okay. I, I saw, um, the training video that you tucked in there that explained what type of properties I'm supposed to look for, you know, and, and now they're saying questions like the absentee owner is just as good as the uh, owner occupied. Right. And I'm like, yes, that's right. You know, so it kind of also trains them for you, you know, and, and you kind of find the person that doesn't need a lot of, um, handholding you, you you find the person that's like a self-starter that's going to like read the play so they kind of figure some additional things out on their own in order to cle complete this really simple task um, but just that that was like a huge step and then so with deal machine you know we i designed like a page that was uh specially designed so i could just send them a link and it would have all the instructions for how to get the app how to add the properties what type of properties to add um, what's going to happen after they complete the test project. And so now, you know, you could just run a job on Indeed. You could sponsor it for 50 bucks and you could have a canned response that has, uh, that link to do the test project. Mm -hmm. And so if you have 50 applicants, you can very quickly whittle it down to like two that are going to be stellar. Yep. And then you could spend whatever additional time after they've completed that in an interview to meet them and to talk about any of the other details. Uh, I, I love it, man. So with, with, as an example, like with the, the $50 job posting, is there any kind of expectation that you usually go in with? Well, hey, I, I'm probably going to pull out one deal finder or five or 10 or kind of what, what expectations should people have if they craft it the right way? I have a template job posting that I use. And I also have some of the past performances tucked in there mm -hmm. and uh, from, from what I would recall, um, it, it was, uh, leave the job opening open for like three full days, sponsor it for, uh, 50 bucks. Uh, I, I turn it up as much as possible. Cause I'm like, this just gets me more people faster and I can shut it off faster. But, um, yeah, so I would expect to spend like 50 to 150 bucks, uh, over the course of three days to just get as many applicants as you can through, just like any other sales thing, you'll have a, a few people that are like really offended that, that they have to do work. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, you just don't respond to them because yeah. <laughs> if they're offended about doing work, I mean, this is barely any work, right? It's just like get an app and do this thing real quick. Um, so yeah, to ignore them. And then a lot of people just like won't respond. And then um, a little bit of people will like have a technical issue and you know proceed with caution um but i do end up answering their question just to give like a little bit more reassurance and, and help them get through uh and then some people will just fly through the whole thing and just be like i'm done you know and that's that's who you want to talk to first uh then you could go back and talk to the successful completers that uh, might have had a slight technical issue but got through and i've, I've had good luck with both of those um, i love yeah, it over three days, you know, you could, you could have 50 to hundred people come through. Okay. And then how, how many just on, on average, uh, if there is a number, if there's 50 to hundred, how many deal finders might you like might actually get through the process that are, that are oh, one. Good? like one, you'll hire one from okay. that, that whole thing. I just said, perfect. Yeah. Cool. I like so, it. Oh, there is one key though. So you want to definitely put your job posting like two or $3 above what Amazon's hiring. Hmm. Now Amazon provides the vehicle. Amazon also requires dedicated hours. Um, 
by paying two or three dollars more, it's actually a better deal for they'll be excited because they're just making more money. They're also excited because you provide flexible hours like they can drive whenever they want. Um, and then it's good for you, too, because you don't have to pay the vehicle and the gas um, like Amazon does. So it's like kind of a win win for everybody. And that's that's a key to making it work. If you try to match Amazon, it's just you, it's just not as enticing like you, those that two or three extra dollars more is, I think, what makes the what's critical for the, you know, the amount of applicants to come through that I mentioned. David, so this is so cool. So with the with the Amazon drivers, as an example, are they leaving the job with Amazon to come drive for you, know, you or your clients or are they staying in that job because that's their vehicle to drive around and they're kind of double dipping where they're getting paid from from you and getting paid from Amazon uh, to do the oh, same thing? Good question. I, I want to hire somebody full time. Yep. Uh, you know, there. I think there's been a lot of talk about, Hey, like the mailman or, or, Hey, this Uber driver can do this while he's Ubering. I really just want to, I'm, I'd prefer to pay five bucks more and just say, do this for me full time. I actually have a minimum amount of hours. So I won't work with somebody that wants to do 10 hours a week. Your minimum, their minimum with me has to be 20. Uh, and so 20 to 40 hours is critical. And they've also got to commit to a weekly meeting with me um, so that we can have a checkpoint. Um, cause it's like the airplane analogy that our coach Dan Martell says that if you fly a plane from New York to San Francisco and, uh, the autopilot is always making sure it's on course and it's always making these small corrections. And, and if you don't have that weekly meeting, then your, your driver could get way off course and you know, you'll have paid him, but he'll have added all these leads that maybe aren't what you want, you know, but you've, it's kind of like, you now you have a long way to come back to get on route and get back to where you should be. Um, so the, the weekly meeting is critical. And plus, I don't want to spend time training them and having that meeting if they're not giving me at least 20 hours a week. So kind of like a minimum threshold of, of commitment that I want from them. That, that makes so much sense. <clears throat> I love it. So let's, let's, let's dive into the next, uh, b- before I do one question that might be popping up for people is, so let's say I'm just getting going at driving for dollars. <clears throat> Would you suggest that they go out there and do it first? Um, and then if, if so, how long should someone do the driving for dollars themselves before they then go through that process you mentioned to get someone to do it for them? I think that they should go do it themselves until they've done a couple of deals, making their time worth more than 20 an hour. There we go. So, uh, yeah, I think you should go out and do it first. And what was the other side of the question? Um, yeah, I, I think that was it right there. Yeah. You, yeah. you nailed it. Get a couple of deals done, learn how, how it works. So then you can coach the driver. Cause if you've never done it and you're having that weekly meeting with them, you probably aren't going to know all the nuances of how to coach them. And then, yeah. like you said, your value is higher now. And so now you know that, you know, the method works for you. You know how to do it, deploy it to someone who's able and willing to do that for a lower cost. Yep. I like it. So you get your first driver. Uh, let's say you're looking to scale it up. Uh, do you ever suggest that people get more than one driver that you're paying hourly or uh, at, at what point does it make sense to get more than one driver? Yeah. So that's a good question. Um, I, I currently have uh, three drivers and I like to kind of batch do the hiring because mm. like uh, if I could just do the job posting all at once, and keep going until I had three, that's a lot easier than if one drops off. Now I've got to go, you know, re-engage my mind to hiring mode again and, and then re-find a new person. So um, I got I got four last year. And uh, I think because uh, I did a good job recruiting them and I also paid $5 more than Amazon. So I, I did a good job paying them. That actually saved me money because none of them quit until just finally one quit um, after a year because he moved to Colorado. So not much I could do about that. But um, I think I think starting with like one or two is good. Um, but then once once you realize that it's working, uh, next time you hire, maybe do two at once just to save yourself that kind of trouble. Dude, so that that tip is um, really, really good and awesome, guys, because what, what oftentimes happens, whether you're hiring salespeople like for a software company or something else is, is like 
uh, David said, you'll hire someone and then you get that role filled for a little while. But then if they leave, you're back to ground zero. But doing it the method that, that David had mentioned, you're able to increase the volume of properties that are coming through, which is awesome. But now if one leaves, you're still able to stay operational and you don't have to go back into that job now to do the driving yourself or um, to go do the hire. So I, I love that, man. Um, so someone's got a driver, two drivers, three drivers hired. Uh, what's next, man? So I, I, uh, what's the next step to make sure that produces the result that you hope it does? Yeah. So that, uh, first of all, they've, they've gotten it through the test project. They know what to do. So they're going to go spend a week adding properties and then you're going to have your first weekly meeting. And that first weekly meeting is probably going to be a good learning experience for everyone. You know, um, what you're going to do is you're going to spot check each of their leads. Um, because you, you don't want to pay for leads that you don't want. So if they've added leads that you don't want, you want to bring them up and communicate why you don't want that lead. And it, it's, it can be kind of nuanced sometimes. You pull up the picture and it is too good of a looking house. You're like, that house is too good looking. I really want you to focus on something that's uh, got a broken window, some peeling paint, whatever. Uh, or they could just give you an absolute terrible looking house and you're like, I don't think I can make money on that because that area, even if the house is in perfect condition, max is worth 40 grand, right? So I, there's no room for me to improve that house or, you know, I, I, that's not going to give me a big enough, you know, profit opportunity. So why don't you go to a place that's a little bit less run down? So, and, and you want to do that with everyone on the call every week as much as needed. So that way you don't have to say the same thing to every person that they can just all hear it at the same time and learn mm -hmm from uh from what the others are hearing from you. So, david so so when someone uh you've got one two three drivers do they just go out and drive wherever the heck they want or um do you map their route for them kind of how do, how do you do that to give them guidance on where to go good question so i i just tell them um some uh, so they can all see where each other has driven first of all so they on the map uh, in the app cool. They can see routes. They can see where has been covered in the last six months. And so I say, you know, please stay within the city limits and please find new areas that we haven't covered. And beyond that, you are free to go looking. Um, I have that requirement 12 an hour and I hold them to it. So in the app, it tracks their time and mileage and how many properties they added. And if they added 40 in one hour, then to me, that's too much. To me, that means they're in an area where there's so many houses that are run down so badly that uh, I might as well just blast mail to that neighborhood. Mm. And, and just, I don't want them to, to add that, that many properties. But also, if they are only adding like four properties an hour, I'm not getting my money's worth. They're probably in an area that is not, that is too nice. You know, it's too nice. So uh, that's, that's what I have found. And uh, that's worked out pretty well. They, they find the areas that need to be covered. Man, so I, I kind of putting you on the spot here and I'm sure you have something pulled up, but is there any way we can look at some of what you're talking about, like on, in the app? I know you've got the, yeah. probably the desktop version of it. The reason I want to do this guys. So for everyone listening to the audio version, go to our YouTube uh, account. So just go to YouTube, look up Carrot, find our account in there. Look for this video with David Ledko uh, from Deal Machine. And the reason I want to is because the things that we're talking about to get your driving for dollars spun up, uh, so many of that stuff is automated through his system. And I'm, I'm a big automations guy. And if, in, if you can automate out tasks that you don't have to do, then you can go use that time for higher value stuff. It could be for negotiating the deals, like David was saying, rather than driving. It could be um, spending time with your family, going and driving race cars. It could be like whatever the heck it is. So I'm going to do this and try to share your screen. I think you should be able to do it. And um, awesome. So if, if you're able to, yeah, show, show me. Uh, that's cool. So those green lines there, if you're, if you're watching this on the YouTube version, it's cool. The green lines, I'm assuming, is where someone has driven in the last six months, correct? That's right. Okay. The yellow is six to 12 months old. You can mm -hmm. see on the right. Yep. And then the, the red is uh, one year to two years old. And then okay. after two years, it totally just uh, goes away because that would, that would be when I would definitely need to drive, redrive that again. Mm, 
This is cool. So dude, since, since we're in here and we, we talked about a lot of things, like there's a page that you send people to that, that trains them. Uh, of course, we're not going to be able to show the actual iPhone app part in here. You guys can go get that in the app store. Just look up deal machine. I don't make any money from doing this guys. We will give you a, a, a code. Actually, if you go to deal machine and if you do join, uh, type in carrot, I might get some money there. I'm not sure. I don't care if I do, but type in carrot that way we can know and, and, um, and track whether, you know, where, where you came from for David, but go to deal machine, get an account, uh, type in carrot when you're joining there. And, um, you guys will be able to actually use and experience what we're showing you. So, well, let's, let's kind of bop around here. Give us a little bit of a tour of, of, of how someone might use this to streamline that, that driving for dollars. process. Yeah. Yeah. So as soon as you find a house, you're driving along, you click one of the houses, which have black dots over them. So you, you can easily click them. Uh, and then from the car, sometimes it's hard to see, okay, what house am I looking at? What address is that? So the address number is by the black dot. So if you see that on the house, you know, which black dot you're looking at. You can quickly tell, Hey, it's owner occupied. This is who owns it. And it was actually bought three months ago, you know, so I personally have not added those properties that have just been bought. So I'll, I'll go on to the next one. Um, and then, okay, this is a historic one. Let me back out of here a little bit. Yeah. All right. So here's another house and uh, it looks a little bit run down. So I'm going to add the lead from there. I can quickly start a mail campaign or I could skip trace the owner. So let's skip trace the owner real quick. This is so cool that this stuff is built in here, man. Cause like, like you're seeing before, this all had to be done manually and it makes it so much easier. It, the, the cool thing is it makes it so your, your driver can do this stuff for you. Yeah, the way I typically handle it is my drivers, um, they just are responsible for adding the properties. Mm -hmm. And then I um, will then, approve them kind of in bulk to start the mail campaign, or you can automatically yeah. just start the mail campaign. Uh, in this case, if you're out yourself and you're feeling friendly, you can skip trace it and then you could call that person. And so this, uh, this number here has been verified as connected and it's a mobile number. Hmm. That would be the first, that would be, you know, the number I would actually contact or text real quick. Just be like, Hey, you know, uh, have you considered an offer on your house? Just drove by, uh, might even send a picture of it. So that's the phone number side. And if you're gonna send uh, a mail campaign, you can also do that uh, here on the address tab. Um, and you could just uh, start mailers like that. And, and now it's gonna send my mailing sequence to them and I can just keep on driving. This is cool, man. So you've got comps in there. You've got the skip tracing part of it in there. Uh, one, one cool thing that you guys do bring in, you guys bring in a lot of that data. So there was a stat that I saw in one of the earlier houses you brought up that said with, with their best guesstimate from the data, the equity in the property. Um, how, how accurate do you guys, do you guys see that, that type of data being David? Is it within I, a margin of error or is it sometimes way off? Yeah, that's a good question. The way that I use the equity is not necessarily on my filtering and targeting phase, mm -hmm. but when I'm having a conversation, if somebody called me, I'll look at it. If it says they've got 0% equity, I will actually specifically ask more questions about what do you owe on the property? Was there a refinance done? Or is there a second mortgage on it? And so, it's more of um, an alert once I get into like, the, this is actually a lead who called me face um, to know that I might dive deeper in their questioning in that area. If it looks like they don't have a lot of equity. Uh, I found that the equity is not as up to date as some of the other data points, like the County records, for mm -hmm. example. This is cool, dude. Dude, in any, I mean, you have so much in the software, anything else in the, like so many amazing tools, anything else in here, you've got the driving part, the leads part. If I was managing a team of, of, of deal finders, um, how might that look in, uh, in deal machine? Oh yeah. I'm glad you asked. So, um, you know, I, I do have several drivers driving for me and let's take a look here. 
you know, these are routes that were actually driven today uh, by my drivers. And so you can get like a glimpse of when they've started and stopped those driving routes. And you could tell how many leads they added. So I have um, Anthony and Garcia and Martin. Um, so that's a quick glance at like what type of uh, driving they've been doing like today. Uh, now we talked about the recruitment side of things and I wanted to show you that. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is where you could actually set up your page to recruit drivers. So I've got my own URL here, you know, dealmachine.com slash team slash indie. And so this is the link that I would uh, respond to hey, my job applicants. You're mostly the indie. So we, we've got it uh, with a video, an explainer video kind of at each step of the way. Mm -hmm. And it walks them through. You can also replace it with your own videos, but um, here's, here's some of the training ones. We have seven training videos that uh, they, they can put them through as well, uh, welcoming them to the team, paying them. And so we've got a video for hourly per property or per closed deal, however you want to pay. Uh, and then we've got uh, three levels of distress. So if you want everything that's distressed, you could select that video. Uh, that would be the totally abandoned one. Uh, and then level three would be slightly distressed. You know, so you can you could choose uh, which way you want to point them. Uh, if you want them to take pictures, which I personally do, because then that allows me to like give them better feedback, and it also is on the mailer, so it looks makes the mailer look good when there's an actual image they took. Mm -hmm. uh, you can turn on this video. And then if you want them to get more like metadata, if you want them to tag what was wrong with the house, you know, we've got tags and you can turn on this video if you want them to do that. Uh, and then let's see here. Yeah, a couple more things on driving routes and tracking. Um, and you can turn on or off whichever training videos you want them to see. Oh, and then they get a welcome email too. So this, um, saves you a lot of time in the recruitment and training process. Mm -hmm. This is cool, dude. Cause, cause the, the way, the way I think about it and like what we talked at the start is, you know, how, how do you buy back more of that time and how do you use systems and how do you do something that works really well, but not have you have to do it. And, and the cool thing that you guys have built here is essentially someone joins the machine there. You're building the carrot side of things. Uh, and while the, organic side of the SEO is starting to season. That might take three, six, 10, 12 months, depending on your market. You get some paid ads cranking. If you've got the budget, which we suggest you guys do, but if you don't, uh, either way, it doesn't matter because you can get some leads coming in immediately. And all you have to do is get the darn app, uh, sign up for the right one that's going to give you the amount of deal finders that is going to uh, uh, help you get what, what you want. 300 properties on average turns into a deal depending on your market. Um, you know, once again, more expensive markets can be more or less expensive markets, possibly less. And so then your whole focus then is going out there and using the process David talked about to then get a deal finder or two or three, and then make sure that they're actually finding properties, adding them, you're coaching them. And then you can still go over here and do uh, the rest of your marketing to get deals and, and negotiate and with your other types of marketing. Um, so David, let, let's say someone... Uh, did this once you have a deal machine, uh, deal, a deal finder or two or three or whatever it is, what's your time commitment then as the business owner uh, towards driving for dollars? So you've got the weekly meeting um, and yeah. then it sounds like uh, just a little bit of time to go through the the leads, the deals to make sure that um, you want them and you can send mail to them and, and do that kind of stuff. About how much time should someone allocate on a weekly basis if they have some people finding deals for them uh, to use the tool and pull deals out? 30 minutes, you know, it's a, it's a weekly 30 minute meeting and I review not all of the deals, but I like randomly spot check the deals right there on the zoom call with everybody else. That way, if I notice something, I can just say it in real time. And so I don't really spend time outside of that. And, uh, I even have a template. So driver scorecard. Sweet. This is cool. And um, there we go. go. There you go. So hours, hours and leads. And what I do is I ask them, I input it, and then I check it in the software to make sure that it's accurate. And then to make sure that like, you know, 
443 divided by 40. I'm guessing that was a little short from 12 an hour or, you know, so that that's why it's um, yellow. And then, you know, 78 and 20, that was red. So gotcha. if you get too many reds, you reach an end of the road. Mm-hmm. You know, but <laughs> this, this that's is what cool. the color codes mean. I, I, dude, I, I, I'm going to put you on the spot again. And everyone who's listening to the audio version of David's showing me uh, an amazing scorecard for driving for dollars. Do you give this away or is there a spot where people can buy it? The scorecard? Oh, it's a good question. You should, if not, you oh, should. No. <laughs> well, guys, go to dealmachine.com, uh, get the account. And I'm sure there's some way to engage in this or the training on it, but it's a simple spreadsheet that he made uh, that's got red, yellow, greens, things like that. So David, let, let's kind of, let's move towards the close here. And, and guys, the reason, like I said, I brought you on is if, if I were to look at the success of our clients, um, the success of our clients depends on whether you guys and gals are closing deals or not. And, and especially in that first year, we want you to try uh, ideally two marketing methods, one to two, uh, really focus on one as your primary in that first little bit of time, and then you stack on more. Uh, but what we always suggest is you do the online and then you do driving for dollars through deal machine. And so when, when you have that as a one, two punch, whether you're an agent or an investor, so let's say you're an agent, and you see a neighborhood that you want to get listings in, you can pull this up and see when the last time it was sold. If it was sold 10 years ago, amazing. Like send them a postcard from you to say you might be looking to sell. There's a lot more equity in your home today. And there's just so many amazing things you can do as an agent as well, using this exact tool uh, to start their, so start to try to get listings. Um, but David, if, if people are wanting to get Deal Machine, I know it's crazy easy, but uh, what should people do? And um, anything else that we didn't cover that would be worthwhile diving into? I think this was great. I would have them go to dealmachine.com and click the sign up button right there. It's a place to enter the carrot promo code. That carrot promo code will end up getting you 30 free mailers, I believe. Sweet. Uh, yeah. Love so you, you can fully test it out, send mail to yourself, send mail to some additional homes. And uh, that's going to be what you want to do. I also did bring up, if you go to dealmachine.com slash indeed, uh, I've got the actual ad that I use for recruiting the drivers available. And I've even got some of the like templated messages that I send with my link. And I did, I did have that available. So I wanted to mention that. Dude, I, I love it. So dealmachine.com forward slash indeed. And we'll link that up in the show notes, y'all on YouTube, on Apple podcasts and on our blog. Get that because that's the whole key right there. If you want to gain the freedom, the, our, our stated mission here at Carrot is helping you guys and gals build businesses of freedom and impact. And, and we talked, we actually kicked off the whole, kick off the whole podcast on freedom. You know, we talked about David going out there and um, doing an amazing, amazing thing, being able to experience driving an IndyCar. Um, and having freedom from his business in that moment to do that. But also how do we as founders create more of that and having amazing systems that automate things that, that we don't need to do is one big part of that. Um, being able to uh, have other people uh, do and use those systems for us to, to gain leverage is one way to do that. So get the ad template, um, dealmachine.com forward slash indeed, and we'll put it in the show notes. And then guys go out there and get your first, uh, get your first deal finder. Maybe you are the first deal finder, right? Maybe you are that person. It's like Brian Rockwell was uh, when he first got started. He ended up doing 600,000 his first year in business, it, but it all kicked off by closing his first deal through driving for dollars. He got eight, an $8,000 deal. Um, he ended up having to, to send letters to, I think it was between hundred and 200 at that time, but he was like very tightly targeted the way he was doing it. Um, and he was doing it himself and he might've got lucky too. Um, but then he parlayed that money into then expanding, uh, his marketing and he's in, he owns shoot parts of over 500 multifamily units. Now, four years later, it all started with the first deal, which came from driving for dollars guys. So go get deal machine, dealmachine.com. When you go sign up, uh, put in carrot, there is the promo code, get 30 free, uh, postcards, um, mail pieces from that and grab the indeed ad as well. David, dude, I, I, I'm always impressed with what you guys have done in the products. I know you and I have talked about this, but, um, it's something we're always striving to, to improve the experience that we have as well. And you guys do that, uh, you know, better than most, if not anyone in this industry, industry, as far as experience in the software. So, uh, I wanted to show people what you guys have built because it should be showed off. You guys do a great job. 
Thank you so much, Trevor. I really appreciate it. For sure, man. So any any kind of final parting words um, as people are looking to step into driving for dollars and and really expanding that in their business? Any final parting words we haven't gone over? Yep. It's it's the it's the fastest, you know, highest ROI uh, method to, to get those instant results. But I want you guys to take the expectations uh, and, and make a plan. So yep. don't quit too early. Uh, we, you know, in, in a lower cost, you know, it, it's going to take 300 in a higher cost of living place. It's going to take 1200 and you've got to market to them over the course of a few months. So just make sure you've got the expectations so that you don't waste money, which is basically what happens when you quit too soon. So that would be my one piece of advice, uh, no matter what marketing you're going to do or what strategy, but just know the expectations and commit to doing that. Uh, so that you take the emotion out of making the marketing decision, which is a phrase from Trevor. I remember hearing somewhere. <laughs> I was getting ready to say that, man. So I'm glad, glad that you said it. Guys, you've got to remove, remove the emotion and trust the math. And, and let me let me break that math down really quick in closing here. So uh, David had mentioned it's on average about 300 houses that you put into the, into the app um, in, in a you know normal mid-tier market. Uh, it'd be about a thousand dollars per deal on average. Let's just say plus or minus. Even if it's two thousand, doesn't matter, right? Because even if it's two thousand for the deal where you're making eight or ten or twenty or thirty, guys, it's two thousand dollars to trade for twenty or for ten or for thirty. Doesn't matter. And so uh, the way that I look at it is take your average profit per deal. I'm just going to use a twenty thousand uh, dollar number. Write down that average profit per deal right now. If you're wanting to make like a little mini marketing plan, here's how here's how we do it. Uh, you don't start with emotionally how much money you think you have to to quote unquote risk for uh, marketing. You say, what's my average profit in my, in my market? I would say it's 20 grand. How many of those leads does it take to close one of those deals? If it's carrot, we just ran a big survey um, and on the carrot side, we compared it against carrot leads, non-carrot leads, um, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of our top clients filled the survey out. And on average, it's about one in 10 leads turn into a deal through carrot leads and deal machine, um, uh, leads are really high quality as well. Cause they're found. Like you go find the property that is run down. It shows and exhibits a uh, distress. So it's going to have a really, really good close ratio as well for the ones you actually get a hold of and talk to, right. The ones that you're really driving conversations with. So let's say you're closing one in 10 into a deal. That means uh, if it's a $20,000 profit per deal, that's about $2,000 is technically what, what you could spend per lead, per good qualified lead. Now, Deal Machine is different, right? Because you're putting properties in there uh, with Google pay-per-click, like someone submits a form, that's a lead. You could spend up to $2,000 for those to break even. But what I like to do is say, average profit per deal is 20K. Um, what would you spend in order to get to $20,000? Start with a 25% of that number, 5,000 bucks. I'd trade 5,000 all day long to make 20. Now you want it, you, you'd much rather, pay two to get 20, right? But 5,000 says math will show if I can close deals in $5,000 or under, I'm going to be a happy camper if I can scale that. And then once again, it goes to that lead per deal ratio. Okay. If you, if, if your cost per deal is $5,000 target, uh, max target, divide that by the 10 leads it's going to take to close that deal, 10 quality conversations. Once again, that's about uh, $500 per lead, I guess, in that case to make the profits you want. So if we're looking at this, guys, and this is how I'm going to finish it. If math shows you, if your average profit per deal is 25 or is 20K, and if you would be willing to spend $5,000 to, to trade for $20,000 all day long, your deal machine budget actually just went up. So rather than showing it be $1,000, you can actually spend two, three, four, four thousand dollars $4,000 on deal machine, paying someone per the hour, paying for the, the, the postcards. Because let's say it's in, it's in on the 3,150th dollar, right? That's that, that, that went out to pay people hourly or for postcards that you finally get that darn lead that closes into a $20,000 deal. You just replenish all of your marketing now. And now you take half of that profit, put it back into scaling up that marketing method through deal machine or through carrot. You keep the other half. Okay, guys, you close your next deal. Bam. You take half that profit, scale it up in a deal machine and a carrot. And then you keep that other half until you found that you've maxed out the market. Now you can start pulling more profits out. So bump that number up psychologically in your mind. I want you guys thinking I'm not stopping deal machine until you've dropped three grand or more uh, into that three to 5,000 bucks. If your average profit deal is 20 K or more, and you guys will succeed. Trust the math, not the emotion. All right, David, appreciate you hopping on, man. And uh, hopefully we get to see each other in person sometime. Uh, it's been a while. It's been too long. Thanks, Trevor. Maybe I'll have to plan that vacation 
up to Oregon. Do it, dude. Come, come out here, man. I'll take you out in the river, get some, get some mountain biking in if you want, or fishing or whatever the heck you want. That'd be a blast. Do it. I'll, I'll call you on that one. <laughs> that would be fun. Well, well, cool. I'll get in touch with you about it. Thanks again, awesome. Trevor. Appreciate hey, it. Thank you. And everyone, guys, go follow David as well. Follow Deal Machine. Go subscribe to their YouTube channel. Uh, we did some great content together over there. Subscribe if you're not already to the Carrot Cast and both Apple Podcasts. And I don't know if you can subscribe on Spotify, but if you can, do it over there. And give us a rating and review. And as we talked earlier, go to dealmachine.com, put in Carrot in the promo code. You get 30 free um, direct mail pieces out of that and get your first Deal Machine deal in the next 90 days and let me know when you do so we can celebrate it with you. You guys have an amazing, amazing rest of the week. We'll talk soon. Thanks, David. Thanks. Bye.